Hello, Peter Charles here. Uh, today I'm going to have a look at casting in the surf and the types of rods we should use. Now, whether we're fishing for striped bass, coho, or any other species that might be swimming by, uh, we've often done it in the years past with single-handed rods. Well, these days, two-handed rods are getting more popular, and we're going to look at a couple of choices today. We're going to look at a beach rod versus a switch rod. And we're going to look at the differences between the two and why you should be using one over the other. Now, I've just come back from Cape Cod and I've fished both these rods extensively. So I've had a chance to see where they work best and where perhaps we should be using the other one. Uh, here we have a beach rod by G. Loomis. It's available in a 10 weight or a 12 weight. It's the Cross Current Specialist Series. And this one is a Loomis Pro 4X switch rod. In this case, it's 11 and a half foot. Uh, nine weight. First off, let's talk about the ratings. Now, Loomis has done something quite nice. They made it very easy for us to get lines to fit these rods. If we're talking about the beach rod, uh, either a 10 weight or a 12 weight uh, double hand beach line, or the grain weights marked on the blank, 425 or 100 grains heavier if it's a 12 weight version. So we either use a beach line or we use our favorite shooting head according to the grain weight marked on the blank. Very easy. In the case of the uh, Pro 4X switch rod, it's a nine weight, and that nine weight is a single hand rating. What that means is you can use a single hand nine weight on this rod and it will work. When I was in Cape Cod, I used an Airflow Sniper uh, floater in a nine weight, and I used the older Cold Water Salt 40 Plus in a nine weight also. These are single hand lines, and, and it worked fine. So. Nine weight, single hand, very easy. It's also marked for Scandinavian Skagit heads, if, should you want to use them. They're also clearly marked as well. But the bottom line is for overhead casting, nine weight line is very easy. Just go out and buy your favorite nine weight line and go fishing. The next thing we should look at is the difference in the way the rods are designed. Now, any good two-handed rod is going to be able to overhead cast or spade cast. They'll do either job. However, how they do the jobs are a little different. Now, obviously, a beach rod is optimized for overhead casting, and a switch rod is over optimized for spay casting. So in this case, we have this beach rod, and if you want to spend most of your time overhead casting, obviously, you should look at a rod that's optimized for it. However, if you spend most of your time spay casting and only occasionally overhead casting, this is a better choice, perhaps. So if you're only going to buy one rod, you want to look at what's your main use. Am I going to primarily overhead cast, or am I going to primarily spay cast. That'll dictate your choice. If you're like me and you're lucky to have two or more, then you have some other choices and you might say, well, gee, should I buy a lot of switch rods or should I introduce a beach rod in there as well? So when we're talking about that, let's talk about the advantages of one over the other and depending on the situation. Now keep in mind I used both, but where I used them was different. The beach rod I tended to use in the heavy surf. And the switch rod I used more in the quiet bays. And there were specific reasons for this. First off, the beach rod being optimized for overhead casting and also throwing a heavier line, obviously it did an awful lot better job when it came to distance. Though the nine weight switch could throw a line a long way, further than I can with a single hander, nevertheless the beach rod beat it easily, 20, 30 feet more. I mean, didn't, didn't matter what the wind was doing, didn't matter what the, river, the, the ocean was doing, you could pound the line out there. It was ridiculously easy. Very low effort, too. It didn't take much stress on the shoulders to put, you know, some serious line out there. So if it's, we're into a distance contest, this rod's going to do the job for us, the beach rod. Now, if distance is a little less important, there are other factors coming into play. And those factors are influenced by the design of the rod. So let's look at the handle design first off. With the beach rod, it's optimized for overhead casting. So we're going to have a grip that looks like this, where we're going to get hold of that bottom grip with a full hand. And this, we might move wherever it's comfortable for us, roughly usually in the middle of the uh, grip. Now, as you look at the switch rod, you can see the differences. Look at the size of the difference between the bottom handles. And look at the difference in the thickness. Uh, this is much thinner than here. The swelling is different. As you can see, this one is Pretty well tapered straight through. This has a swelled butt and a, a swelled butt cap. And that's caused by how we might want to uh, handle this rod. 
if we're using running the line that we're dangling in the current, we'll need these fingers free to be able to handle our uh, running line. So we tend to grip it more like this, or perhaps like this. We don't usually grip this rod in this fashion. So this is the reason why this grip is designed this way. Now moving on a little bit, you can see that this is an uplock reel seat on the beach rod, and it's also got the reel much further ahead. Now one of the reasons for that is we often tuck these rods under our arms when we are doing what we call a two-handed strip, where we're stripping uh, line in using both hands, the rod's tucked under our arms. Now one of the things we find when we have our reel forward like in this fashion is that this heavy salt water reel balances the rod differently compared to a much lighter reel that we would use on the switch rod. And because of its move much further forward, it balances differently. And when we put these rods under our arms, they will behave differently. And the biggest difference is with the, the beach rod, your tip of your rod is up in the air. Whereas with the switch rod, it has a tendency to dip into the water. And that's strictly because of the balance point. And remember, when you've got it tucked under your arm, you're not in a position to continually hold the rod up. It goes where it wants to go. And if the tip of the rod is in the surf, it's going to get knocked all over the place by the surf. So it's very, very important that when, you, with the, uh, when you're fishing in the surf to keep the tip out of the water. Uh, when you're fishing quiet bays, it doesn't matter as much. So, big difference right off the bat. This handle is not only designed for overhead casting, it's also designed according to its balance point. Also, let's look at how the uh, reel seats are made. This one obviously is an up lock and a down lock. We have two rings with uh, rubber on them for a good seal. This is anodized to be salt water proof and all the components on this rod is salt water proof. Now this is a salt water proof as well as long as you rinse it well. But this one is designed for salt water and this one is more intended for fresh water. Something to keep in mind when it comes to maintenance. You better make sure you wash this one well. Not likely to corrode, but you know, nevertheless, this is the salt water version, the, the, the beach rod. Now, when we look at the next section up, you'll see some big differences in the stripper guides. Here's the switch rod. Its stripper guide is very, very close to the end of the ferrule. Whereas with the beach rod, the stripper guide is much further down the length. Now, there's a good reason for that as well. We use stripping baskets in the surf. And, of course, in the river, we don't. We just let the running line dangling in the water. By moving this uh, stripper guide further forward, it gives us a better angle for the line to come out of the stripping basket. Uh, with this, it tends to come out at, at a sharper angle. Now, the next thing about the stripper guides is the size difference. This is the beach rod here, and here's the um, switch rod. And you can see the beach rod stripper guide is much larger, and that's to enable it to shoot better. It also has another uh, small uh, benefit as well. There's a tendency to tangle lines. It doesn't matter how you handle your running line, there's always going to be some tangles. When we get a bit of a tangle working in the stripping basket, as that line flies out, it hits this small stripping guide on the switch rod and tends to jam up a little bit more often than on this one. Sometimes we get lucky and the tanger goes through the guides and it pulls out. But uh, with the smaller uh, stripper guide here on, on the uh, switch rod, sometimes it doesn't work out as well and it jams up. But the biggest reason for this large stripper and the rest of the guides in the rod being so large is of course to fill, facilitate a good shoot. So that's basically it. Uh, either way, you're going to catch some fish with them and you're going to have some fun. So if you're going to go out to the Cape or the West Coast or you're going to fish the surf in our Great Lakes, uh, these rods are a lot of fun and they are effective fishing tools.